All right. So we want to continuously evaluate performance. Once we have trained, we want to continually monitor to see that our training worked and that it's maintained and that it's generalized. Um, and so how do we evaluate the results or the progress of our trainees during supervision? So we might be able to look at client outcomes. If they are serving the same clients for a long period of time, we might be able to look at a, an individual client's outcome. If they are serving um, you know, different clients over time, maybe we're able to sort of compare um, clients that they served earlier versus clients that they're serving now and their performance or their outcomes. Um, a lot of times client outcomes is such a long-term goal that that might not be very easy to evaluate within supervision constraints. Um, but maybe there are some of those things, like uh, maybe there's testing scores that are uh, assessed regularly and would be available to compare. You can also evaluate the trainee performance. So like those skill checklists and, and fluency checklists, what is the performance of the trainee on certain skills? Um, their professionalism in their uh, interactions with you, with clients, with learners, with uh, other colleagues and, and people they're collaborating with. And you can also specifically solicit trainee feedback. Um, how do you think that this is going? What else can we work on? Is there anything that you want me as the supervisor to do differently? This can be sometimes a little awkward for supervisors to, um, to hear that maybe the way that they are teaching or delivering or supervising is not the best for a particular trainee, but it's better to hear that um, and be able to take that information and make change than it is to not know that you're not being effective, right? So ongoing monitoring that we have to do for supervision. Um, there is a lot of documentation honestly, that has to happen for supervision. We can't just say, yeah, I supervised this person for two years. They're good. They can sit. Um, we do have to track the frequency of the supervision. Now, there's a few different ways you can do that. Um, the BACB used to have a tracker, which was nice, but they've kind of discontinued that one. It's still available if you search for it, but they're not supporting it. Um, you can do an Excel spreadsheet or do um, like a shared one, a Google Sheets or, or a shared uh, cloud access sheet that you're both able to log. Um, that makes it easy for the supervisor and the trainee to um, see the same document over time. Um, also, I have become aware of a um, free, at least currently, free online fieldwork tracker, ripleyfieldworktracker.com, and it allows the trainee to log everything. It's saved you know, on their systems in the cloud storage, and then you can invite your supervisor. The supervisor can watch. It's got nice you know, percentage graphics and stuff that show you where you are with things. And it's basically kind of doing what the BACB uh, fieldwork tracker was doing, but in a much more user-friendly way. Um, so that's an option right now. Um, my current trainees, um, the ones that started a while back, um, are still using the BACB trackers because that's what they started with. Um, and then I have of uh, some of my newer trainees are testing out uh, this uh, Ripley fieldwork tracker. And so far, both systems are working. Um, before the BACB had their own fieldwork tracker, we were tracking things on uh, Google Sheets and Excel spreadsheets, and then we're just emailing those to the, the trainee would email those to the supervisor so that you can log it. Um, one thing that I do think is important, if you have multiple supervisors supervising one trainee, you need to have um, a log that the supervisors are marking down when they are supervising that the trainee doesn't necessarily see maybe so that you can verify 
um, because uh, if I'm looking at the form, but I don't know when this other supervisor, I don't know whether or not this other supervisor um, was there at that time, I can check the spreadsheet that the supervisor is keeping. So you might have a, a you might have two forms if you have multiple supervisors under one organization. Um, you also want to be recording the skills and the outcomes um, for your trainees. So this might be the, the feedback form. This might be the, the task list tracking. Um, you're monitoring progress and concerns. So you might be um, uh, conducting some assessments periodically um, in order to see if they're able to demonstrate certain skills and um, and how they're progressing towards maybe what your end completion criteria was. When you are in person um, doing this ongoing monitoring, uh, you might be able to visit during their work. So you might be able to, in, in a school setting, maybe you're able to go into their classroom and observe for 30 minutes. You could then complete your checklist. Um, you might be able to provide the model and feedback at the moment, or you might meet later and go over that checklist and do some role play and feedback later. If you're doing remote supervision via distance, you want to make sure that you have the FERPA or HIPAA compliant video viewing and all the appropriate permissions for um, anybody. We have been successful at um, getting uh, permissions um, to observe in schools via Zoom. I think it, it really, um, more schools have been open to it these last two years because they couldn't have people coming in anyway. Um, so going forward, it might be something that is a bit more of an acceptable option. Um, but even prior to the pandemic, we were able to get um, permission to, you know, observe in certain classrooms, you know, sign whatever things, um, the viewing platforms, there are a few different ways you can do that. You can sign uh, a BAA with like Zoom and get the HIPAA compliant version. Um, there are other video systems that uh, work that way as well. You just want to make sure that you have the right protections in place if you're going to do distance video viewing. Um, same thing, though, you would then complete the checklist and then you would be able to provide written and uh, verbal description to them. And you might also uh, be able to do some modeling, uh, depending upon the skill set. Otherwise, it can be one that you target in a future um, meeting. Product measures that you might look at to measure um, ongoing progress. It might be written plans from current clients or current learners that your trainee is supporting. You might be looking at the IEPs and the VIPs that they are writing for your, uh, uh, for their learners. Um, and maybe you are uh, conducting additional assignments. Um, we have a written usually written, there are a few video assignments, but we have written assignments for every topic that we cover in our group supervision. Um, those topics and the assignments are shared on Google Drive. You could share them on any sort of cloud platform that you wanted to or whatever, and they create opportunities for practice. So when we learn about measuring um, behavior, observing behavior, and measuring behavior. We have them practice writing operational definitions. We have them practice planning an observation and how they're going to collect data on a certain skill. We have them go out and take that data and then bring the graphs back. And then we practice graphing that data. So um, you can set up those additional opportunities, especially if you're monitoring uh, skills, uh, the skills that you're monitoring aren't occurring in the natural environment already.